Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome. I'm George. Uh, I work at Collabora. I'm a senior software engineer um, working on multimedia things like um, Gstreamer and Pipewire. And today I'm going to talk about what I've been doing uh, in the past one year with uh, Pipewire, enabling Pipewire in the automotive industry. So <clears throat> let's start by defining automotive. <laughs> Um, so basically, I've been working on a project called Automotive Grade Linux. Um, I'm pretty sure I've, you've heard of it before. If you haven't heard, ask around. There is a booth at the Building K as well where you can see a live demo of Automotive Grade Linux. And my task in AGL has been to, to make an audio system for cars. Now, the immediate question you might have is, what's so special about the audio system? I mean, we've been, we had audio systems for years in, on Linux. We have, okay, the, the driver layer works, also works. We have uh, Pulse Audio on top um, that works really well for the desktop. Um, but, yeah, what's missing? So the, to, to explain that, I need to, to explain to you how the hardware looks like, because that's the difference, basically. So on a desktop, we're used to having this kind of scheme where there is a single CPU and a single um, audio card. Might be multiple, but it doesn't matter. You basically choose uh, one audio card that you use. You have your speakers connected there, and you have your microphone connected there, and that's um, the whole thing that that um, that exists, and uh, yeah, you you have things like Pulse Audio that can manage this really, really, really well. On a car now, things are quite different because you have different nodes in a, inside the car, different CPUs, multiple CPUs. So you have maybe one CPU that is the in-vehicle infotainment uh, system and then another CPU around uh, somewhere else, which is maybe, a, I don't know, a hardware radio device or a CD player. Um, there is a dedicated um, DSP somewhere else, um, which is doing the uh, filters and um, echo cancellation and finally amplifies the audio to the speakers. Um, there might, might, might be multiple DSPs, actually, um, one for the front speakers, one for the rear seat speakers. Uh, there are some cars that have even speakers on your headrest. Um, there are also microphone arrays that, sit, uh, that are on your seat belt or on the top, on the roof, um, on the doors, on the side, everywhere, basically. <laughs> And this is all quite, this becomes basically a very complex network that you no longer manage um, in the way that you manage the desktop. Uh, so some requirements, basically, um, yeah, I, I mostly talked about it already. Uh, you have a lot of different hardware. Um, and the other thing that I didn't say is that you might have streams that go um, around without passing through the main CPU. So you may have, for example, a um, dedicated hardware uh, CD player that directly puts audio on the DSP, and that audio never passes through the main CPU. Although the main CPU still has control over what plays, um, you don't actually get uh, media, uh, the audio data routed through the main CPU for performance reasons. And you need low latency because uh, you may want to implement uh, echo cancellation and things like that. And then on the software side, for when on, on the IVI system, when you want to play something, there are some uh, requirements there as well because you might have, uh, you basically have apps that have a different context. There are apps that do, it, for example, apps that play music um, that uh, are in, a, in the multimedia context, let's say. And there are other apps that may be doing something special, like, for example, your navigation app, which um, every once in a while it says, uh, please turn left in 100 meters or something like that. And that sound needs to be um, treated specially because you want to, to make sure that the driver can hear it 
you want to play it on the front speakers, you want to play it amplified, uh, lower down the music while it's playing, and things like that. So you have to treat it in a different path than, um, and in a different way than um, how you treat the music. Um, we want security because uh, things uh, nowadays are very um, uh, hard. Um, we want to have containerized apps nowadays that uh, can play music or something else, but you don't want them to be able to do something that they are not intended to do. Like, you don't want a music app to be able to take over uh, the navigation um, special stream um, and things like that. And then you have emergency signals when there is something wrong with your car that needs to play um, um, some sound to warn the driver. Uh, that's also something that needs to be treated specially. And it's usually coming from dedicated hardware that has to be certified and it, it won't actually send data through the main CPU again. It will just play directly on the DSP and there is a path there that is guaranteed to work because it's, uh, it's certified. But then the IVI needs to understand that this is going on um, and um, stop the other streams at the time and things like that. So <clears throat> the real problem actually um, to be doing an audio system in a car is routing and policy management. How do we, route, how do we um, manage the routing and how do we make policies. So there have been uh, some projects that have tried to address this. Um, I mean, okay, I'm starting with Pulse Audio. Pulse Audio didn't actually ever try to address this uh, use case. It's really meant for the desktop. It makes its own policy decisions, so you can't actually uh, tinker with it um, unless you build a module, and some people do that. They build a module that tries to circumvent how uh, Pulse Audio is internally routing streams. Um, but it's not very nice. It is fairly resource intensive uh, compared to other um, multimedia demons. And it doesn't implement any kind of security. So whichever app connects has control over everything. And then there have been things like the audio, Geneva Audio Manager, which is building on top of Pulse Audio. It uses Pulse Audio as a backend. Optionally, you can use other backends as well. It basically builds an API for policy management on top of that. But it has um, a couple of shortcomings, like it doesn't... Um, you must call the, the audio manager API, so the applications need to be aware that this exists and things like that. And um, people that have used it, they generally agree that it's complex and uh, not very nice. And then in AGL, we also had another API called um, 4A, which uh, tried to solve some of these issues of audio manager, but uh, didn't succeed in uh, addressing all of them, and uh, people still didn't uh, like it so much. So then there was Pipewire. Um, what, uh, what, is, um, what is Pipewire doing differently to address these issues? So, when I started looking at that, I didn't, Pipewire, of course, didn't support any of these use cases, but it had something that looked like um, it was possible to, um, to develop it to address these use cases. So let's start with explaining a little bit of the architecture of Pipewire. How does it uh, look like? So there is a daemon, Pipewire daemon, that basically handles all the media routing between applications and devices. And um, everything is a different process, so um, uh, you can have uh, applications sending data through um, MFD or DMA buff to Pipewire or capturing data. And then you, have, uh, you can have devices either um, accessed directly through a plugin to connect, let's say, to Alsa or to Video for Linux, but you can also uh, uh, show the present devices uh, through external processes like the Bluetooth uh, uh, manager process that we have that, that uh, does all the networking stuff with Bluetooth and provides the device to the, to the pipe wire daemon. 
And then there is another process which is called the session manager, which is the, um, the, the most important thing that uh, basically looks at the whole um, applications and devices graph and decides what is going to be routed where and makes all these connections. Um, and I'll talk more about that later. That's actually what I'm, I've been doing myself. So inside that blue box, the PipeWire daemon, the things look like that. So in th inside the PipeWire daemon, there is actually a, a, a media graph with um, a lot of little objects called nodes that connect to each other with uh, links. Um, Every application uh, is represented by, an, by uh, an application node. Every device is represented there uh, as well. Halsa, video for Linux, uh, Bluetooth, and we, we, it can also load internal plugins that also provide nodes that can do filtering and um, processing. Uh, Pipewire actually started from uh, providing uh, Pulse Audio for video. It was initially called Pulse Video. So uh, it can handle video data very well. That's its original purpose. Nowadays, it also implements routing audio data. And it's uh, evolving to become a Pulse Audio replacement. It is, uh, it is modular, so you can customize it a lot. Um, it has built-in security, something that Pulse Audio didn't have. Um, it can, it, there, there, are, there is access control per application, per device, and you can make things, um, uh, you, can, you can give access to certain applications to do certain things and not other things, and that's um, what I mean with security. It's, much, uh, it's, a, it's a very clean code and much more efficient that, than uh, Pulse Audio. It's capable of doing low latency audio, and it actually implements uh, the Jack API, so you can also, it can also work as a Jack audio server. And yeah, the, the single most important thing is the external policy management. So applications connect to Pipewire, they don't actually uh, get linked to anything. They, don't, they are not able to do anything until the session manager acts and gives them permissions and gives them um, links to something else, to, to a device. What was missing from Bipwire um, when I started last year, there, there was no session manager. So I started developing a session manager, basically that was all my, my work. And I developed a, a session manager called WirePlumber. That was the first session manager implementation. It's uh, like Pipewire, it's modular and extensible. The target is to provide a reusable session manager for uh, all kind of use cases, um, uh, automotive, other embedded, also on the provide um, desktop session manager. And a session, manager, a session management API as well, so it provides a library that would allow you to write uh, your own session manager if you want, or uh, to write your own policies. To, to decide what to route where, uh, to write uh, modules for WirePlumber to extend its, um, its features and tools around that. Uh, it, it's written using GObject. It uh, provides a GObjectified API on top of Pipewire for uh, ease of use and for enabling bindings in other languages. Um, that would be super useful. And uh, it also provides a, a, an API, which is called the Endpoints API. I'm going to explain that, uh, which is uh, very useful for implementing policies. I, I'm going to explain that. So Endpoints is um, a concept that I brought uh, in, into Pipewire. It didn't exist before. Pipewire itself, it, it routes media through nodes uh, from an application to a device or vice versa. But the thing is that in a car, you have all these kinds of streams, uh, hardware streams, um, that maybe are not passing through the main CPU, and you want to control them. So I, I thought, how can we make an abstraction on top of all of, all of this? And uh, this is what the endpoints are. Basically, uh, endpoints are also little objects that you can, uh, that look like nodes. They, they can be linked together and unlinked but they don't actually have 
media, they don't throw out media, they are something more abstract. So for example, um, you could think of a pipeline that looks like, in, in the endpoints graph, it looks like there is a media player that gets connected to the car amplifier, and these are the two endpoints with one link, and there is no more in that graph. While the same thing on the nodes graph, it looks like there is a media player that goes into a filter uh, that does some processing, and then it goes to a network sync that pushes things out to the car network, and then there is a car network, distribution daemon or whatever that like eventually ends up in the amplifier. And this is a much more complex path that um, the policy management would have to know and would, it would become very hardware specific to, to handle this. So this is, how, this is why uh, I thought we need to abstract this. And these two are meant to run in parallel. So you have both the endpoints graph and the media uh, the nodes graph, and whenever you make a link on the endpoints graph, the session manager uh, translates that into links on the actual nodes graph and on the actual car network or whatever else is there. Um, the endpoints API is also uh, something useful to bring um, the graph closer to what PulseAudio has. So PulseAudio has only sources and sinks. So there is only two things that you can link together. There is no concept of a very much more complex, complex graph. Um, and this is exactly what endpoints are. So you, you have, if you were to implement endpoints on a desktop, you could still have things like um, an application being represented as one endpoint and your speakers or your microphone as another endpoint and then you can link them together, no matter if there are filters in between or whatever else. And this is how it looks in the Indian points graph. So you have your applications, your media player, your voice agent, voice assistant, and they make links to, uh, to the endpoints. There's an amplifier endpoint there, uh, a speech microphone. And there, uh, the top, on the top of this um, graph, we have basically streams that are in the main CPU. The, the, the main CPU actually routes media data. But then we can also represent uh, um, hardware, a hardware player, or something else that is only routed in the, in the car network and not in, in the main CPU. But the main CPU can still uh, have this representation in a graph, and so the policy management code can still look at this and decide, okay, here's, a, for example, a hardware player that decides to... Um, no, in this example, um, so for example, there is a voice agent uh, assistant there that wants to play something, to play, um, and it starts playing, and then as soon as it makes the link and it starts streaming, uh, maybe uh, the policy, manage policy management understands that this happens and it enables some effects on the amplifier endpoint, which could mean that uh, more nodes are getting linked at that point and they enable some effects, or it could mean that something on the, on the hardware is triggered to enable um, this effect where the voice is louder than the music. And um, then the hardware player, the, the user goes and clicks a button on the hardware and the, uh, there's a radio hardware player that starts streaming to the amplifier without passing media through the main CPU, but because we have this graph representation, the policy management understands that it needs to unlink that media player at the top, which was previously linked, and which is in software. So this is um, how it works. And then we have, um, how, would, how do we make the connection between the endpoints and the actual uh, media nodes? So maybe you have, uh, again, two endpoints, uh, uh, an application that plays something and, um, and soft, uh, 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 an amplifier, something that plays, and you want to implement uh, volume controls per stream, so you have the multimedia stream and the navigation stream, which are, as I said earlier, they are something that needs to be treated differently. Uh, so the, the software uh, DSP ALSA output endpoint that I've written there is creating a couple of DSP nodes there that implement volume controls per stream. 
And as soon as you make this virtual link on the endpoints graph, it goes and creates the actual link on the media routing graph. Um, and in the, in the case where there is a hardware dedicated DSP that can support these streams in the hardware and you can trigger um, the different volumes per stream by sending some commands to the hardware, um, it's still the same externally. So you can make a, a link on the endpoints graph and then the session manager, which uh, has a module that implements this endpoint, it understands that it needs to go and send a message to the hardware amplifier to enable that uh, different volume effect. <clears throat> so what's the status of Wire Plumber right now? It um, currently works nicely for AGL. On the demo that we have on Building K, uh, we use Pipewire and Wire Plumber at the moment. Um, the API is settling down. Uh, we are we are doing some more refactoring on the API level on the library, but it's settling down. And we just recently started generating documentation using Hotdog, um, and I'm I'm in the process of documenting right now. I started uh, like last week. I pushed some docs. There are some shortcomings, like it doesn't have flexible policy. Although the policy is configurable, it's not configurable enough, uh, and it works only for the AGL demo and nothing else right now. And there is no security management implemented. We just give access to all the applications, which is bad. But um, we have a plan. So the next steps, what I want to do next is experiment with a scriptable policy, provide something, uh, provide an API that scripts can be written to, to, to influence how these decisions are taken about what to link where. And there is a runtime called Anatoly, written by uh, Bastian Nocera, who, who wrote this basically for this purpose, for um, uh, managing pipewire policies. So my next step is to experiment with that, see if that's something uh, that makes sense, and uh, we, if we can write nice scripts like that. But other, other um, ways of doing that would be, be also acceptable and welcome. The other thing is improve desktop com compatibility and make a drop-in replacement for Pulse Audio that currently doesn't work on the desktop. Um, another next step is to enable management of video, video nodes, enable camera inputs and uh, screencast inputs, and implement security management. There is a design for that. I just haven't gotten around it to, to implement it. The source code, uh, it's all on GitLab for the desktop.org slash pipewire. You can find both pipewire and wire plumber in there. Um, you can make a merge request there. You can file issues there. Uh, the wiki is there. Everything is there. And on the, on the AGL front, uh, I, I maintain a, a branch of pipewire with the AGL specific uh, commits. Uh, that I had to make, although I'm, I'm constantly pushing them upstream, so as soon as they are merged upstream, I remove them from the branch and I rebase. And then there is this uh, meta pipe wire, Yocto layer. AGL is based on Yocto, so these are the um, recipes to build a pipe wire and wire plumber inside AGL. Thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, the question is if I have any benchmarks comparing Pulse Audio to Pipewire. Um, yes, I had the benchmark that's from last year, so it's not up to date. Um, but it was looking like, um, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have the slide with me. Um, but we had some, some comparison of uh, Pipewire basically taking a stream, a 5.1 stream, so six channels, transforming it in a couple of ways, resampling, changing the format, and taking it out. That was using uh, something like 6% CPU uh, with um, 64 samples latency, uh, while Pulse Audio at the same configuration was using 100% CPU, it was failing. Um, so that was a good comparison, it was like that. Um, I'm sorry I don't have latest statistics, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's looking really, really good. 
In terms of flexibility, over here, yeah. Um, you said you were lo looking to do more flexibility. Were you talking about boot time flexibility or runtime flexibility? Because like with the um, adoption of things like A to B in the audio space now, you're getting um, nodes that are coming on and off the buses all the time that are um, making audio harder to manage. Yeah, um, this is, uh, Pipewire is very dynamic in how it manages hardware, so you could, um, it can detect things coming up and moving out uh, at all the time. And Th there, does that include like firmware? Because like, like um, we, you can have uh, A to B nodes with DSPs in them that the firmware, the DSP, which implements different functionality gets changed dynamically as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why it wouldn't be supported, but uh, I never looked at this kind of hardware. Okay, okay. Okay, okay there's no time for more questions. Thank you very much for, for listening.